you, Tierney. Okay. To start. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. And um, welcome to the Ocean Sunfish Virtual Symposium. I'm so excited to introduce our first speaker, Giorgio Carnavali, who um, took the lead in authoring our evolution chapter for the book. Giorgio is, um, oh, he's been at this a long time. He's quite the expert. He earned his MSc in the Natural Sciences and PhD in Earth Sciences at the University of Pisa, and is working now as a full professor of paleontology at the Dipartimento di Scienza del Tierra Università di Torino in Italy. And um, without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to, to Giorgio to tell us all about the very early beginnings of the Molidae. Giorgio, welcome. Thank you very much, Tierney. And thank you very much for inviting me to take part to this virtual symposium. Uh, well, okay. thank you. How much for the chapter. I'm going to talk about the evolution and the fossil record of the ocean sunfishes in a presentation uh, co authored with Luca Pellegrino of the University of Torino, which was my former PhD student here, and uh, Jim, Jim Tyler, which is a legend of tetrodontiform fishes and studies in systematics and evolution of this group of very interesting animals. Okay. Uh, the Molidae is a very small group of uh, Tilios fishes um, belonging to the order Tetrodontiformis, uh, which today includes uh, five species arranged in three genera. Uh, these fishes are uh, characterized by um, a peculiar body plan, which is defined by a number of uh, autopomorphic features. Uh, for example, they have a, a short and rigid vertebral column, uh, they, the, the, the swim bladder disappears in the, in the adults, and there are no, uh, more or less, the, the axial muscles are absent, and there are no ribs, uh, and the pelvic finger and, and, and girdles are absent. But most important, they, they show a, a truncated appearance of the posterior part of their body uh, because of their loss of the caudal peduncle, caudal fins, uh, and uh, which are uh, functionally replaced by the clavus, uh, which is formed by the posterior portions of the uh, dorsal and anal fins, and uh, which provided the, the peculiar morphology, the peculiar body plan to this kind of uh, tetrodontiform fishes. Since the publication of the Le Règne Animal by Georges Cuvier in 1817, Mollets have been uh, considered as part of the gymnodont fishes, together with uh, puffer fishes and porcupine fishes. Um, because of the uh, share, um, uh, um, big like jaws and modified scales, which uh, usually are characterized by pregly spines and uh, variously developed basal plates. However, uh, these three uh, lineages are not the only members of the gymnodont because uh, uh, several fossil groups and the, the extant triodontidae have been included after the publication of this uh, outstanding monograph by Cuvier. Some of the fossil representatives are the oplectids or zinioictids or balcarids plus some other minor, minor groups. Uh, compared to other members of the order Tetrodontiformis, the fossil record of the molids is, is, is uh, very poorly known and is mostly represented by isolated jaws and dermal uh, plates. Uh, there are some reasons uh, for, for this rarity in the record, but uh, the, the, the most plausible hypotheses uh, uh, are related to the synergistic effect of their pelagic habitat and uh, of their weakly ossified skeleton, which is characterized by a spongy or fibrous texture that characterizes these tiny and delicate bones, especially in the genera Masturus and Mola. However, this uh, reduction of the skeletal tissues is counterbalanced by the development of a, a, a robust exoskeleton, 
which is constituted by a continuous cover of scale scales with with larger basal plates which at least in in the, in the genus Ranzania formed a, a solid carapace in any case in in large size individuals there are additional uh, dermalsification that appear characterized as by, by a spongy texture that can be observed primarily just above and below the mouth forming the so-called nasal and jugular plates respectively and along the posterior edge of the clavus forming the so-called paraxial ossicles uh, the, the, the beak like jaws are, are, are uh, represent a, 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 a distinctive features of, the, of, of this family. Uh, the beak uh, is usually formed by a thick mass of osteodentine. Uh, the, the biting edges are toothless and there are uh, trituration teeth that can disappear during ontogeny, but which are uh, elongate uh, and developed mostly laterally. The fossil record of this group uh, is switch of gaps. The earliest putative representatives date back to the Bartonian, so middle late Eocene, about 40 million years ago. And but but most of the fossils uh, are of my are of the Miocene epoch. And um, they've been discovered in sediments originating in, in, a, in a variety of paleobiotopes, always uh, indicating marine environments. And the, the increase in diversity in the Eocene, in the Miocene, uh, is similar, show a similar pattern um, to, to those characterizing the, the whales or other uh, pelagic fishes like gombrids or uh, that became very, very abundant and uh, large sites during the Miocene, probably in relation to a global enhancement, enhancement of trophic resources that led to the to this shortened trophic chains uh, um, during this period. So uh, the earliest fossils uh, assigned to, to, to the, to the Molida um, uh, they back to, to the Eocene, and these are two upper jaws plus a, plus a, plus a, a few cranial bones from the Bartonian um, of the Kuma horizon, uh, very uh, important fossiliferous horizon in the middle upper Eocene, uh, which is well exposed along the Pshika River in, uh, in northern Caucasus in uh, Russia. Uh, these largely incomplete fossils have been assigned to, to, to the Molide, but they are very peculiar because uh, the, the, the big like jaws are formed by separate premaxilla. So they are not fused like in all the other the, the other the other molide. And they are articulate with each other uh, through interdigitating processes uh, in a similar way uh, of, of uh, puffer fishes. Moreover, um, this, this Eocene fossils are characterized by a posterior bifurcate intraopercle, which is very similar to that of puffer fish and of triodon. However, uh, Tyler and Banikov, uh, who described these fossils in 1992, referred them to, to the Molide because of uh, these laterally elongated reduration teeth and of their weakly classified bones characterized by, the, by a striated outer surface. And this is a typical character of the uh, extant molids, which is not, not, not shared by other tetrodontiforms. Uh, as I previously told you, uh, the Oligocene is, 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 represents a, 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 a long hiatus in the record for, for the molide. Uh, and they appear a period in the record uh, as crown members of the family Molide in, in the earliest uh, um, uh, Miocene. So the, the earliest representatives uh, in the Miocene are, are those from the Gaitan formation, Gaiman formation in, a, in a Chubut province in Argentina. 
which are represented only by by isolated big like jaws and a few dermal plates. Uh, the, their first description dates back to the to the um, monumental catalog of fossil fishes uh, published by uh, Arthur Smith Woodwards in 1901, and, but their presence have been uh, reported subsequently by by Alberto Sione and co-authors uh, several times. Um, the, the most important uh, record of Mola in the Miocene is that of Mola pileata. This was a, a, an Atlantic species which had been discovered in several localities uh, in, um, in North Atlantic um, Europe, so in, uh, in Belgium, in Netherlands, and uh, as well as in, in the Choptank Formation, which is a big group in Maryland. Um, and it has been reported by, by Bob Pardy and Coders also in the Yorktown Formation in North Carolina in the Pliocene. However, most of the fossils date back to the to the middle Miocene of of, um, of Europe and 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 Maryland, and are represented by abundant uh, big like jaws, uh, premaxillary mostly, but also dentary, uh, and also by um, dermal ossifications like nasal nasal plate, jugular plates, or paraxial ossicles. Um, they were firstly described by 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 uh, Pierre Joseph van Beneden, a Belgian paleontologist, uh, and uh, at the beginning they were referred to as uh, um, turtle beaks, marine turtles beaks, but but later uh, they were correctly assigned to to the molide. Uh, other uh, isolated uh, isolated beak like Joe's. Uh, referred to Mola, being reported from California, from Southern and Central California, from primarily from Monterey, Model, Modelo, and Topanga formations, uh, but it have been never described in great detail. So they know, uh, we know that they exist, but but they 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 have not 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 well described up to date, and. Um, the most recent report of MOLA in the record are those from two archaeological sites in Southern California Channel Islands, uh, um, about 7,000 um, years before present, and they document uh, uh, the, the exploitation of these fishes by humans uh, several thousand years ago. Um, they are primarily represented by beaks, but mostly by paraxial ossicles described by Porcassian Andrews in 2001. Ranzania, the genus Ranzania is, uh, is, is much more diverse in the, in the Miocene compared to Mola. Uh, at least four species level tax have been described and plus some uh, indeterminate um, the other fossils. Um, the earliest record is that of Ranzania teneiorum from the Langian about 60 million years ago of Calver formation in Maryland. Uh, apparently, there is also a, a, a premaxillary big like Joe from the Antwerp sand in, in Belgium, which can be referred to this uh, to this species. And it is characterized by having uh, three or more rows of triturating teeth in the, in the prem, uh, premaxillary jaws. And um, just a bit more recent uh, uh, of um, Ranzania teneiorum is Ranzania grahemi, which is uh, uh, much more abundant along the Atlantic coastal plain and the Calvary formation in Maryland and Virginia, represented by abundant beaks, uh, premaxillary and, and, and dentary, and dermal plates. In general, the beaks and the dermal plates are very similar to those of Mola, but the, the um, we know uh, 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 almost complete derma shield, which is formed by very thick irregular polygonal plates, and this is typical Ranzanian carapace. So it is, uh, it was a, a very large um, species, uh, which in, in many ways resemble mola, but show some other features which are unquestionably indicative of uh, their pertaining to the to the genus Ranzanian. Uh, 
One of the few taxa known by a partially complete articulated skeleton in the, in the old uh, fossil record of the family Molidae is Ranzenia ogai from the middle Miocene Cerevalian Iranitan formation in the Saitama prefecture in Japan, which is, which is represented by a few cranial bone, uh, partially complete uh, axial skeleton, and most important, um, the dermal cover formed by regular polygonal plates with smooth outer margin and a single central prominent tubercle. Uh, this kind of dermal cover is unique to this, uh, to this species and uh, represent the main diagnostic features of it. Similar uh, to, to Ranzenio Gai, the, the, the dermal skeleton uh, was also important to, to determine the unique um, um, character of the, 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 the polygonal plates of another species from the middle Miocene, in this case of Italy, Ranzania zappai, which I described um, uh, in 2007, and the specific name honored Frank Zappa, uh, which one of my music idol. And, um, and uh, in this case, the scale are polygonal, uh, larger than those of the Ranzania ogai, and but the, their other surface is not smooth at all, and they, and they are characterized by denticulate margins, uh, which are completely different from those of Ranzania ogai and um, the other species of, of Ranzania. So, um, this is another species of uh, uh, Ranzania documented by articulated uh, skeletal remains. In addition, we know. Um, very incomplete, very largely incomplete, but but uh, clearly belonging to Ranzania remains, uh, skeletal remains of uh, an indeterminate species of Ranzania from the Messinian, so upper uppermost Miocene about seven million years ago, of Algeria. Uh, this uh, long um, um, anaphim pterygophores uh, have been preserved uh, in in diatomaceous earth and uh, they, they, they show several structural features that, that clearly indicate they belong to this uh, uh, genus. One of the most, my, in, mo most interesting Miocene fossils of the gene of the family Molide is Ostromola angeroferi, uh, discovered uh, in, in Austria in the, in the beginning of the, uh, the 2000s. Uh, near the city of Puging in, uh, in the pelagic silty clay of the Ebelsberg Formation uh, in an early Aquitanian deposit, so really at the beginning of the Miocene. And uh, uh, this piece is documented by three partially complete specimens, specimens or uh, of gigantic size, uh, uh, close to three meters in standard length, which is very unusual for fossil. And they, they certainly represented some of the, the most interesting Cenozoic fossil, fossil fish known to date. Uh, uh, all these three specimens uh, uh, lack a large part of the head, but the axial skeleton is well, is well preserved. And, and uh, they show uh, some features uh, which are similar to Rancenia. For example, they, they have 10 caudal vertebrae and uh, the, the, the posterior most caudal vertebra um, is a shaft like morphology, which is similar to Ranzania. But they also show some unique features, uh, especially the, the epaxial proximal pterygophores uh, are uh, much more elongated than the epaxial ones, and the, the, the rays of the clavus are entire, so they are no. Distal, there, there are no distal bifurcation in, 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 in this race. Uh, let's talk about the interrelationships of the Molide. So we, we, we saw that the fossil record is, is, is far from being rich, especially compared to the other lineages of the Tetrodontiformis. Uh, in any case, the, the, the Molide uh, since uh, the, the earliest phases of the evolutionary histories, they can be uh, clearly recognized as a mono, monophyletic group. 
they, they can be defined by more than 25 skeletal features uh, that, that provide evidence of their unicity in their body plan. Uh, their sister group uh, have been, uh, has, has been dis 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 discussed extensively. Uh, several others um, uh, suggest that the, that the Xenoictids can be considered as their sister group and that the separation between these two clades uh, took place during the Paleocene. So that the Eomola bimaxillaria is, is, is the oldest representative of the family and uh, uh, because of their of the separated premaxilla and uh, peculiar morphology of the interopercle, it is commonly regarded as the sister group to all the other molded genera. The crown group of molids appeared, uh, probably appeared in the Oligocene, uh, even, though, uh, even though we have no record in the Oligocene up to date or, or no confirmed or published record up to date. Uh, Ranzania is considered as, as the, the sister group to all the other crown molids. It is defined by several skeletal features, uh, especially um, uh, as, uh, they have a old Ranzania, a, a bony carapace. Uh, the rise of the clavus are distinctly branched. They have falcate pectorals, 18 vertebrae. Uh, the supraoccipital crest is posteriorly elongate to reach the anterior margin of the dorsal fin pterygophores. Um, the, 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 the opercule is long and thin, and the, the body is compressed and uh, is laterally compressed and elongate. Um, Ostromola is, seems to be the, the, the sister group to the pair formed by Masturus and Mola, and uh, um, it is uh, defined by the, the elongate and branched rays of the clavus and the paxial pterygophores, which are longer than, uh, than the paxial ones. Uh, in the pair formed by in the derived pair formed by Masturus and Mola, uh, Masturus has no record. It is not 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 known up to date in the fossil record. Masturus has uh, sixteen vertebrae, and especially is defined by having a medial lobe in the clavus, which is formed by rays, which are not supported by pterygophores. Uh, Mola is characterized by having uh, 17 vertebrae and a rod-like interopercle, which is separated from the subopercle. Um, moreover, in general, uh, there are bony plates that can develop uh, um, in the um, distally in the most of the rays of the clubs. Looking at this very incomplete fossil record, it is clear that there are several open questions that, that, that must be answered, and uh, we hope to do this very soon, thanks to new findings. But uh, at present, we, we have uh, several problems in interpreting the, uh, the tempo and mode and div of divergence within the gymnodons. So we know that the Xenoictis are their sister groups, but we have no idea precisely um, uh, when they diverged and which kind of morphotype characterized the early stages of uh, their evolutionary history. We have no idea about the pre miocene history of the family. So we know that there is a large uh, gap uh, through the later late Eocene and all the Oligocene, which is not represented in the record. Although I have seen several pictures of big like Joe's um, from the Oligocene of South Carolina, but they are still unpublished. They were in the hands of private collectors. So hopefully they will be described. This will be described. And uh, we have no idea of the, the, the endoskeletal anatomy of, of some of the, the, the taxa 
known uh, solely based on big life joes and, uh, and their mild scale plates. So hopefully an articulated skeleton of these fossils will appear in, in, in the record. And finally, we have no idea of fossil masturus. Uh, so this genus is completely unknown in the fossil record. Thank you for your attention. Ah, I'm, 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 I'm unmuting. Giorgio, thank you so much. So many questions arise from the work you're doing. It's so fascinating. And I, and I love the fact, and since I'm talking to you from California, that there are some unresolved, um, you know, fossils here that really need, I think you need to take a trip to California once the COVID crisis clears and we can go look at some of these fossils in the, in South, um, in Southern California and the Channel Islands. Um, you, you mentioned about um, some diversity in the ossicles in the clavicular region. Well, we've certainly been looking at that as well in terms of the diversity in the MOLA, in present day MOLA. There seems to be a lot of variability in how the, in that in those ossicles. And so I am um, I urge you to tune in to some of um, the talks later in the day. Mayana Nygaard is going to be talking about her work with um, Molotecta and she'll be touching on some of that those um, findings which I think are interesting as well. Um, I had so I had some questions for you. Um, well let's see um first i i just had to you you named Renzinia after frank zappa yeah yeah <laughs> is, is that just a personal fondness for frank zappa where did that come from were you playing him in the field or oh yeah uh, no because because during the excavation when we when we discovered this smaller uh -huh. we, we had a, a, a radio uh-huh in, in 2001 and uh, all the day we we have just a, a couple of cassette music cassettes of very old thing uh, of Frank Zappa album. So one of the new pieces uh, was for him. Well, I love that. It's sort of like how Don John um, Johansson named Lucy the 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 um, hominid fossil Lucy because Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was playing. So. So it's great, great hearing those inside stories when when you wonder where did that name come from, yeah. Um, so so um, there 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 are some questions out there that come to mind. Um, you know why why no Masturus fossils? It's just such a such a conundrum. Do you think they're there and they're just not? Do you think they fossilize differently, or or any any ideas why no masters fossils have been found? So, so the main problem is related to the overall incompleteness of the molded record. Yeah. But uh, uh, the main question is uh, that we we use it to to, to classify all these big like Joes. Uh, and uh, and uh, and to um, to assign them to to Mola or Anzania, mm. but this is this can be this can change uh, in the future. Perhaps if, if if we found additional articulated skeletons with this kind of big like jaws or dermal mm. skeletons, perhaps some of them can can be placed in Masturus. I, I I think that that placement in Mola. It's much more generalized. It's something like it, it was referred to Orthogoriscus and then transferred directly to Mola. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fossils of Ranzania are much more reliable in terms of characters that can relate them to, to, to Ranzania. Right, right. Yeah. And and quite diversified the Ranzania. Yeah. You found. Yeah. yeah well, I think that, that, that during the middle Miocene there were a lot of taxa in this family. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're going to be talking about them later in the day, as well as those the trituration teeth. Kate Bemis will be mentioning um, about how the molas have baby teeth and how they lose them. Modern day mola and um, axial. So lots to tune in for the for the remainder of the day. Um, 
Giorgio, when if people have some questions, can they write them to you and ask them after, the, after you watch your watch your talk later? Um, be available for answering some questions. I would be happy to do this. I think you're going to pique a lot of interest. And um, one last question: Where's your next expedition, or is that secret? Oh, the next one? Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's not secret, but uh, it, it it would be in Peru. Oh. Okay. But uh, who knows when? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The situation is uh, it's pretty difficult there. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, hopefully next year. Who knows? Who knows? But fingers crossed that we'll all be able to re. Um, start our field work again. Oh yeah. I just wanted to thank you so much, you and um and Jim and Lucas for for contributing to the to the book. And I think you're going to to excite a lot of MOLA paleontologists and um and you might you might get some more field assistance and um in, in the future. Absolutely. So thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye, Tierney, and bye -bye. thanks a lot for inviting me. Oh, oh, my pleasure. Thank you for joining. Grazie mille. <laughs> <laughs> Prego.